Hey, you have come to the right place for encouragement today. So go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can be connected to all the videos that we upload all throughout the week. Now, you may feel led to get connected to the ministry as you're watching this video, and we've made that super simple for you. Go ahead and check out our description to find out the ways that you can connect with us. Now, while you're watching, you may also feel led to sow into the ministry, and we encourage that because we know that our ministry can reach those that are far, near, and in our backyard. We have outreaches all throughout the year, and you will help us tremendously by sowing into our ministry. Thanks for watching. Now check out this message. This weekend, it was a marathon weekend like most weekends for me. I'm a youth football coach. And so this time of the year gets pretty hectic. And so with little bit of time that I had to peruse social media as I was scanning up and down my timeline, it was filled and maybe your timeline was filled with the same thing. It was filled with parents who were dropping their children off at college. I had that very unique experience almost four years ago today when I dropped my baby girl off at Rutgers University. And uh, it's hard to do that as a parent because <laughs> it's the first time for me really that she's out of my care. I'm not close. I'm not around the corner. I'm not across town. It took me a couple hours, right? Where I live, it takes me about two hours to get to her. And so <laughs> with all of those emotions and things that I was experiencing when I dropped her off at college, I began to think about this thought. And I want you to think about it today is that sometimes we drop our children off and we take our children to college. But sometimes I don't think we always consider the significance of what we put in them. I don't know if we always consider <laughs> the significance of, of what we carried and, and who they are. And so thank God my daughter will be a senior <laughs> in, in, in a couple of weeks when she goes to school. And I'm grateful for that. But I realized that this college experience was necessary. And so as a parent, I was scared to release her. But the reality is I needed to release her so that she could become who God had called her to be. Yeah. And this morning, I want you to hear that in your spirit, because I believe that each of you are carrying something. Matter of fact, can you say that with me? Say, I am carrying something. There's something that God put in me. There's a purpose. There's a destiny. There's something that God has called you to do. And in order for you to experience the fullness of what God wants to do in your life, it requires you to let it go. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need an Elsa anointing. Oh, come on. Do I have any Frozen fans in the house today? <laughs> right. What is the song that Elsa sings? Let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> and sometimes it's important for us to let it go because there comes a season and a time in our life like it did for the mother of Moses, Jacobed, where you can no longer hide what God is doing in you. Oh, come on. I wish I had some help in this place. I feel like preaching today, y'all. I'm just going, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to talk to you, but I feel the Holy Ghost already because I believe that many of us are pregnant. Come on. Somebody say I'm pregnant. Oh, come on. I'm pregnant with purpose. I'm pregnant with passion. I'm pregnant with an anointing. There's something that God wants to birth for me. Hallelujah. And in order for me to experience all that God wants to do in my life, I got to tap into something I want to introduce you to today called the Jacobed anointing. Come on, somebody say that with me. Jacobed anointing. That is the name of Moses' mother, Jacobed. We don't read a whole lot about her in scripture, but she was a very powerful woman. Somebody say amen. amen. And so here's what I want to tell you, the chi child of God, is that even when you don't recognize the significance of what you're carrying, your enemy will recognize it. Oh, I wish I had some witnesses here. I wish I had some Bible readers who knows the backdrop to what was happening here in Exodus chapter two. The reason that Jacobed had to hide Moses was because Pharaoh was looking, 
for the men, the babies, the, the male children that will be born to Israel because he did not want them to rise up and overturn his throne. And so he was looking for them. And so here's what I want to help you to understand, child of God. Sometimes the people in your life will recognize what you're carrying before you recognize it. I wish I had some help here. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Sometimes people in your life will see the thing. You're trying to figure out why those co-workers don't like you. It's because they recognize that you're carrying something. You've been trying to figure out why is it seems like certain people in your relationships, that in your family, you just have friction with. It's because they recognize that you're carrying something. Do you ever wonder why you go into certain rooms and it seems like the atmosphere just changes when you enter the room? It's because those people recognize that you're carrying something. Come on, somebody say, I'm carrying something. And here's what I want to let the devil know. Hallelujah. You can look for all you want. You can search all you want, but I am not going to abort what God has put in me. Oh, I feel the power of God there. I'm not going to abandon what God has put in me. It's unique. It's special. It's a part of my purpose. Come on, somebody say it's in me. Hallelujah. And because it's in me, I refuse. I refuse to allow this thing to get away from me. And so here's what I want to help you to understand, child of God, that everything in our life depends on fuel. <laughs> Your home depends on fuel. I was out all day yesterday coaching. Like I told y'all, I do this time of the year. So from about one o'clock, God help us to 7.30, 8 o'clock yesterday. I was at the football field. And when I got home, it was warm in my house. And it's because, you know, in modern technology, I have one of those little Nest thermostats. And the Nest thermostat decided because no one is home, we're going to conserve fuel and not burn, which I appreciate when BGE comes. <laughs> but after all day, being out in the heat, coming home to a hot house is not fun. And I forgot, normally, sometime when I'm on the beltway, I'll go ahead and hit it from my phone so the house begins to get cool. But yesterday I walked in and I'm like, man, it is hot up in this joker. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> and because it was so hot, it got me to thinking that it depends on fuel. And can I help you to understand that even your future, come on, somebody say my future, <laughs> depends on fuel. Oh, I wish I had a witness here. <laughs> Where God is taking you, you need fuel to get there. What God is doing in your life, the breakthrough that God wants to bring, it requires fuel. Come on, somebody say it requires fuel. It requires fuel. Many of us, <laughs> we didn't come to church by faith today. We came by way of automobile. Yeah. And we came by automobile because we had fuel. Yeah. And if you think you're fancy, <laughs> like some of us, and you drive an electric car, which I do, <laughs> that still requires fuel because you got to charge it up. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> and so there's nothing that happens in our life, our buildings, everything here, right? All of this wonderful machinery and technology. And for those of you who are watching online, everything that you're able to do and interact with is because it, there is something behind it that is fueling it. Are y'all listening to me? And see, oftentimes it is the things and the people behind big things that are happening that, that are fueling it, but we don't always recognize them. Many of you, I'm sure if I said, who is Moses in the Bible? You would say, yeah, Moses is a great deliverer. He's a great, he's a great, he's, he's, he's one of the foundational people in the Old Testament. We would know that, but my, many of us would know about Jacobath, Moses' mother. Again, come on, somebody say, behind every great thing, there's something or someone fueling it. Oh, I wish y'all would help me in here. <laughs> There's something or someone that's feeling it. And I want us today to pay close attention to the things that are feeling it. And so <laughs> here's what I want you to see today, child of God, is that we are standing on the precipice of possibility. Somebody say possibility. And we're looking into the face of a God who is both hidden and revealed. A God who moves in the shadows and he brings light into dark places. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Lord. <laughs> and when we turn to Exodus chapter two, we see the beginning of something miraculous. We see something that was hidden, but it couldn't stay hidden. Oh, come on, I wish you would talk to me in here. Something that was released, but it returned with greater purpose. 
And so the first point that I need to give you today, child of God, is that what you are carrying, you can no longer hide it. Come on, somebody say you can no longer hide it. <laughs> this child Moses was marked by something divine from the very beginning. This child Moses, <laughs> God had placed something inside of him. It wasn't ordinary. That's why she saw him and she said, hey, there's something unique about him. And can I tell you today, child of God, there's something unique about what you're carrying. Can I tell you, uproar, there's something unique about this church. You aren't like other churches. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I grew up in church. I can tell you, y'all ain't like other churches. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but that's a good thing because God has some, put something unique in you. God has given you a very unique purpose. He's given you a very unique destiny. Come on. And what I'm telling you is I believe that we're in the season where you're not going to be able to hide any longer. Can I just take a moment and talk to those of you who attend Every week or you tune in online, but you're not as involved yet. Notice that word there yet <laughs> in the ministry <laughs> as you could be volunteering, serving. I want to tell you today that you can no longer hide. I know we have 21st century lighting in here, but I want to tell you that this is not the season for you to hide. God is calling you out. God wants you to know that this is not a spectator sport. Come on, somebody say amen. You're not supposed to come here and just see Pastor James living out his purpose. You've got a purpose. There's something that God has called you to do. And because there's something that God has called you to do, I believe that this is the season where you can no longer hide. Touch your neighbor and say, stop hiding. Step into what God has called you to do. And just like Moses' mother, maybe you have been trying to hide out of fear, out of uncertainty, out of the pressures of life. But I came to tell you that you can no longer hide what God is doing. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can't hide it. <laughs> what God is doing is so undeniable. <laughs> what God is doing, hallelujah, you're, you're so unique. Hallelujah, that's why you don't fit in. Hallelujah, it's because God is doing something great. Come on, somebody say, shout, you can't hide him. Oh my, I remember the first baby that my wife had. The first baby, you know, for any of those of you in here who've carried children before you know that first baby doesn't really show sometimes until about maybe six months or so right maybe sometimes four or five right De depending on you know everybody's different I'm, I'm aware of that right <laughs> but a lot of times you don't know but there comes a point <laughs> in those trimesters where it gets to a point where oh okay we see you've been working <laughs> <laughs> we see you've been doing something okay, because it becomes so evident. And I believe, children of God, that's where we are spiritually in this season. I believe that what God is doing so great is in us. Come on. It's beginning to show. Are y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. That even people who don't know you. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, y'all got to hear that with your spirit. Even people who don't know you, they can begin to see. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and I know, I know it's not good etiquette in our culture because we want to be careful just in case. Amen. But it starts happening. It becomes so undeniable that people start asking, hey, how many months are you? <laughs> Amen. How, how you carrying? And just for the record today, Pastor B is not pregnant. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I just been slacking on my gym time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but what I want you to understand that we're in a season where what God is doing is so great that you can no longer hide it. And I don't know who it is, but there are gifts, there are talents, there are anointings right in this church that are dormant because you've been sitting on it. And I want you to know that this is the season where God is about to expose you. <laughs> where God is about to use you because he wants to do something great in your life. Come on, somebody say, Lord, do it in my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can try to suppress it, but sooner or later, it will come to light. What God placed inside of you is too powerful 
to be hidden. Come on, look at your neighbor one more time, eyeball to eyeball, and say, you can't hide it. Whew. And what I appreciate about Jacobet is Jacobet, like you and I, she had a choice. <laughs> she could have allowed the discomfort, the trauma of her circumstances. She could have allowed those things to get in the way. She could have did what we say in the 21st century vernacular. She could have stayed in her feelings and said, why is this happening to me? She could have, she could have with an attitude, she could have shook her fist at God and said, God, I just had this baby and now the thing that I carried for nine months, <laughs> the thing that was growing inside of me, now I've got to release it. I've got to hide it and send it away. I've got to give it away. Lord, why is this happening to me? She could have been stuck in her feelings. She could have been stuck and said, you know what? You know what? Just forget it. I'm going to go somewhere. And for the rest of my life, I'm going to cry. I'm going to sit down. But no, she didn't do that. <laughs> what I appreciate about Jacobet, what I appreciate about how God divinely orchestrated these things, his point number two that I want you to get today is that you must shift your focus <laughs> from what you can't do to what you can do. Oh, come on. <laughs> Somebody say that with me. <laughs> say God has given me the ability to do something. Oh, come on. <laughs> you might not do it like I do it. You might not do it like Pastor James do it. <laughs> Amen. You might do it, not do it like other leaders in the house do it. But can I tell you, you can do something. Oh, come on. <laughs> you can do it because there's, there's something that God put in you. And this is the season for it to come forth. Come on. Somebody say, Lord, help me to shift my focus. Not from on what I can't do. But what I can do. <laughs> oh, Moses' mother could no longer hide him. And she didn't get into despair over what she couldn't do. She shifted her focus. <laughs> and God will never require of you, Uproar Church, what you cannot do. But he will always challenge you to do what you can do. <laughs> Come on. There's a, con there's a time in Moses' life that you'll read further down where he asked him, Moses, what is in your hand? Are y'all listening to me? Because God never requires something from you that you don't have the ability to do. <laughs> God always wants you to use what you're working with. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and so I don't know who it is under the sound of my voice today, but use what you got. Oh, come on. Use what God gave you. Use the experiences that God gave you. Your experiences are unique to you. Yeah. Come on. And, and I think that's one of the problems in this culture is that there are so many carbon copies that everybody's trying to be like everybody else. And the reality is that God wants to use you and your experiences. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what can you do? Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost here. What can you build with what you have? <laughs> you may not have the power in this current season to change the whole situation around, but you can build something that God can use. <laughs> Stop thinking about what you lack and start focusing on what you have. <laughs> because what you have is enough in the hands of God. Oh, come on. Somebody say, I am enough. Oh, man. <laughs> One of the biggest travesties I believe in the church today is that we often discount our ability. <laughs> we often see ourselves as less than. We often see ourselves as futile. <laughs> but how many know little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand? And so here it is today. I want to tell you, you can do something. <laughs> I want to tell you <laughs> that what God has put inside of you, like Jacobed, it's not going to grow unless you feed it. 
<laughs> and see, many of us are looking for our dreams and our visions, and we're trying to figure out what's the disconnect between <laughs> what God showed us and the reality that we're facing. And can I tell you, most of it is because we haven't fueled it. <laughs> it's because we haven't fed it. It's because, amen, that we have been in our feelings because things happen. And it's like, you know what? You know what? I I'm not even going to try. And in this season of our life, I am challenging us to say, you know what, God, with everything that you gave me, with the ability that I have, I'm going to work it. <laughs> come on, touch your neighbor and say, work what you got. <laughs> oh, come on, work what you got. Hallelujah. Because what God has given you, you can work it. Amen. I believe with all my heart that we're in a season and it's like it was when my children were younger. I remember that not only would they cry when it was feeding time, but my wife would also have an internal experience. And I would see her, my wife, she'd be like, honey, something's going on. And she'd be like, it's time for me to feed the baby. I'm like, baby, how do you know? She said, because I'm starting to feel full. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> do I have any lactation specialists in the house? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and what happens is there's something that happens on the inside when it's feeding time. And I believe that there's someone under the sound of my voice. You've been feeling it for a very long time <laughs> that your destiny is calling you, that your purpose is calling you, that there's something greater that God wants to do in you. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's feeding time. And God just wants somebody that will step up to the plate. Hallelujah. And can I tell you that many of those nights, God bless my wife. Amen. Because while I was sleep snoring in third heaven, amen, she was up and she was, guess what she was doing? She was feeding those babies. And if you saw them now, you'd be like, wow, they've gotten big because that's what happens. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, it's not going to grow unless you feed it. Hallelujah. Where is it in your life? That you've been looking for growth in, but you haven't been feeding it. <laughs> Your dream won't work unless you work. <laughs> what God has called you to do, it's not just going to happen. You've got to prepare yourself. You've got to fuel, amen, <laughs> your journey. You've got, to, <laughs> you've got to work toward what God has called you to do. Come on, somebody say, it's feeding time. It's feeding time. Hallelujah. <laughs> and what happens if you begin to ignore the internal, <laughs> the internal signals that come, eventually the things in your life will start yelling. Yeah. They'll start screaming. <laughs> and you'll be like, okay, I hear you. And it will cause you to step up. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> That's a good word for somebody who maybe your finances have been screaming at you. Maybe <laughs> your marriage has been screaming at you. Yeah. And can I tell you, all of those things have been opportunities that God has been wanting you to step up and say, I'm trying to get out of you what I put in you. Yeah. Oh, come on. Are y'all listening to me? I'm trying to get out of you what I put in you. Come on. Somebody say it's feeding time. It's feeding time. And I pray right now with the help of the Holy Ghost that every person under the sound of my voice that you would learn to tap in to the supply that God has given you. Hallelujah. As we release this Jacobet anointing today, I pray that you would tap into the gifts and the talents and the abilities that God has given you like never before. Come on, somebody say it's feeding time. And in Exodus chapter Two, verse five, it says, and the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself yeah. at the river and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch him. And when she had opened it, she saw the child and behold, the babe wept. Come on. <laughs> and she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrews children. Can I tell you <laughs> that perhaps the thing that you've been praying for is actually looking for you. <laughs> Maybe your situation is actually looking for you. You thought you were looking for it. 
<laughs> it's actually looking for you. Your purpose, your destiny is calling to you. Do you hear it? <laughs> Tune your ear to the spirit today to hear. God is saying, I want to use you. <laughs> God is saying there are more outreaches for us to do as a church. And I want to use you. There's more lives for us, amen, to connect to Jesus. There's more purpose that I want to work out in you. And I just need somebody who's willing. And see, the thing that I love about this continuous process is that my wife, she would feed them. <laughs> she would empty herself. <laughs> and then guess what would happen in about four hours? The cycle would start all over again. Oh, come on. I need y'all to hear that. <laughs> and, and here's what I'm trying to get you to see that as long as she was willing to feed them, the supply continued to come. Yeah. Oh, don't you miss that. <laughs> oh, don't you miss that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and can I tell you, as long as you are willing to pour, God will continue to supply. Oh, I wish I had some help here. There's somebody under the sound of my voice today. Maybe you've been fearful that you were going to pour and not have anything left for yourself. Can I tell you that when you pour out, God will continue to supply and make sure you have everything that you need. Somebody say, use me, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so the third point that I want to give you today, and I'm not going to be too much longer. <laughs> that is that what you have will never reach its full potential until you release it back to God. <laughs> it wasn't until Moses' mother released him that God began to move in miraculous ways. And as long as you hold on to what God has given you, it remains limited in your grasp. But when you release it, come on, talk to me in here. When you let it go and trust God with it, that's when it can reach its full potential. <laughs> oh, the prince, the future prince of Egypt <laughs> came because his mother was willing to release him. Are y'all listening to me? And because of that, Moses was raised in the palace. <laughs> because of that, Moses was learned <laughs> and he became familiar with the customs of Pharaoh's house. And God would one day use Moses to accomplish something great. But none of that happens if Jacobet doesn't have faith to release him. And I don't know who it is today <laughs> that's carrying something. But God is saying, release him. Let me have it. See, when, when God gets his hands on it, it changes the whole equation. I'm thinking about a little boy who had stopped by Long John Silver's and he had two fish and five loaves. <laughs> and Jesus got his hands on it. <laughs> and Jesus used that same two fish, five loaves. And he multiplied it because he released it. What did God do? Multiply. <laughs> you release, God will multiply. Come on, say it with me. Say, I release, I release. and God multiplies it. Oh, I wish y'all would talk to me in here. I feel the power of God. <laughs> God wants you to release what you have so that he can use it for his glory. Can I tell you that as long as you hold on to it, it's always going to stay in its present form. <laughs> it will never become something greater. And I believe that all of us in here, God is calling us to greater. Somebody shout greater. greater. And because he's calling us to greater, we've got to look and say, God, what is it that you're requiring of me? What is it that you want me to release? Is it <laughs> I come to Sunday, but I don't come to midweek? Maybe. What you want me to release is my schedule instead of having time for everybody and everything else. Lord, I clear my calendar and I make you the priority. <laughs> I spend time in your word. <laughs> Maybe it's a seed. Amen. That you have. <laughs> and God will never ask you for that, which you don't have. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But maybe it's a seed that you need to release. And that's going to be the thing that brings breakthrough in your life. Come on, touch your name and say, release it. release it. So that God can get his hands on it. Hallelujah. And here's what I want you to know today is that he won't force you. 
Because the beauty of it is he is the perfect gentleman. He wants you to release it. Something supernatural happens when you release it. She recognized that there was something special in Moses. She recognized that there was something unique in him. In all of that, she still had to lay it at the feet of God and say, God, this is your child. <laughs> what is it today that you have been carrying that you have not released? Is it your dreams? Is it your children? Is it your finances? Is it a ministry that God put in piety inside of you? Today, I want to tell you to release it. Because only then God can use it and multiply it. And so many of the things that happen to us, can I tell you that our tears, our trauma, the hurt and the pain that we go through in seasons of our life. Can I tell you that all of those things have been the fertilizer to what God is working on? <laughs> can I tell you that God uses things that are hidden oftentimes? And so there's things that are happening below the surface that you might not be able to see, but there's something going on there. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and so because there's something that's taking place below, don't you discount it. Don't you doubt what God is saying. Are y'all listening to me? There's something that's working for you. Hallelujah. And I think scripture says it this way. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Nor has it entered into the hearts of men. What God has prepared for them that walk uprightly. Come on, somebody say he's doing something great in my life. Don't you believe your eyes greater than you believe the word of God. <laughs> Release it so that God can get his hands on him. Point number four, and I'm almost finished. Your consistency is what produces fruit in your life. Let me say that again. Your consistency is what produces fruit in your life. <laughs> Moses' sister Watch from a distance. <laughs> she stayed close. And when the moment came, she stepped forward. <laughs> and the Bible says she offered to find a Hebrew nurse for the child. <laughs> and what I appreciate about Jacobet is that she was consistent in her assignment. Yeah. She got up day after day after day. And she went and she nursed the baby. She didn't do it one time and then started looking around saying, where is my harvest? <laughs> she didn't do it one time and said, okay, now I'm expecting this baby to be big. Come on. Are y'all listening to me? I have a little experience with this. Y'all listening to me. <laughs> Nobody goes to the gym one time, unless you're me <laughs> and look in the mirror and start saying, oh, oh, right. <laughs> But you understand over time. Oh, come on. It's consistency. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and I think that some of us here, maybe we have been looking to God for things that don't necessarily match the consistency of our lives. We think because we, <laughs> we come to church one time, now everything is supposed to be fixed in our lives. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, it's your consistency. It's your consistency that's going to produce fruit. It's what you do when the feeling leaves. Oh, come on. It's what you do when the motivation leaves. It's what you do when everybody else come here, Noah. It's what you do when everybody else thinks you're crazy. When you are building and you're working towards something and everybody's like, I don't see a cloud in sight. Oh, come on. <laughs> you talking about it's going to rain and I don't see a single cloud. Have you checked the weather app, Noah? Oh, come on. And it's what you do in those seasons of your life that will produce fruit in your life. And what I appreciate so much about Jacobet is that when she was consistent in her assignment <laughs> and the thing about it is that Jacobed would have probably done this assignment for free. <laughs> but when we read the text in Exodus chapter two, God had divinely arranged it <laughs> that she would be paid 
for doing something that you probably would have done for free. Oh, I wish I had some Holy Ghost filled people here. Can I tell you that when you are consistent, payday is coming. Oh, come on. Can I, can I tell somebody here today that for every door that you open, for getting to church early, for helping the man of God, can I tell you your payday is coming? Can I tell you that God's going to do something great in your family? Can I tell you that you're going to fuel your future breakthrough? Come on. Come on. Somebody say payday is coming. I remember my first job. <laughs> and I was new to the work world. I didn't know what to expect. I went to work. And at the end of the day, I was only 14. So y'all forgive me. I went to my manager and I said, hey, I'm getting ready to clock out. Where do I pick up my my money? <laughs> and he said, no, Brandon, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> we have a system here. You work. And that was back in the old school days where you didn't get paid current. I don't know if young people know about this, about working a week or two in the hole. Oh, come on. <laughs> Can you relate? <laughs> and so I didn't get my first check until like a month out. And I'm like, Lord, have mercy. But guess what, y'all? I showed up every day. Oh, don't you miss that? <laughs> because some of us have more faith in our employers than we do our heavenly father. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> because I showed up every day because I knew that payday was coming. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> and can I tell you, just keep serving God. Keep honoring him. Keep volunteering. Keep showing up. Keep stepping up. And God will honor you. <laughs> can I tell you, there is not a benefit plan in the world that can beat God's benefit plan. Are y'all listening to me? Somebody just say, be consistent. And so the Jacobet anointing teaches us to be specific and to be intentional about what we're doing so that we can experience all that God has for us. And the fifth and final point I'm going to give you today, and I'll be out of your hair. And I pray that this blesses you. If you're taking notes, please write this down. Feel free to tweet this if you're inclined. I don't know. Since we call it X now, and I don't know. Do you X it or you still tweet it? I don't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but here's what I want to tell you. What you're working on now will be the thing that brings you breakthrough later. <laughs> Moses' mother came every day and she fed him and she knew that God had put something special in Moses. She knew that God had put a calling on his life, but I'm not sure if she knew all of what God would do and how God would use him to be the thing that would liberate an entire nation. An entire people later. Because <laughs> little things that you do now will produce big results in your future. Come on. Somebody say, I'm fueling my breakthrough. <laughs> Can I tell you part of the secret sauce to my life right now <laughs> is that I am living <laughs> in current breakthroughs right now in my life of things years ago. That I'm doing <laughs> that the Lord had called me to do and I made a sacrifice. I knew her early on. I couldn't go where everybody went. I couldn't do what everybody did. I knew there was a price for what God had called me to do. And can I tell you right now, I am living those realities that I've seen the hand of God provide for me in ways that blew my mind. <laughs> can I tell you that what you're working on now? is going to produce and fuel the breakthrough later in your life. That's why the scripture says, do not despise humble beginnings. Hallelujah. And you're like, these little things? Yes, these little things. Keep on being a consistent mom. Keep showing up for those kids every day and watch the fruit that it's going to produce. 
<laughs> Keep on being a good husband when culture tells you not to. When culture tells you you've got other options. Are y'all listening to me? Keep showing up. <laughs> Be faithful to the job that you have. Help me somebody. <laughs> because one day <laughs> you might own a company like the company you work at. Are y'all listening to me? <laughs> what you're working on now will be the thing <laughs> that fuels your breakthrough at a later date. Come on, somebody say, Lord, do it in my life. <laughs> it is, isn't it amazing that the very thing that she released <laughs> later became the source of her provision? <laughs> what you're working on right now may seem small. It may seem insignificant, but it's going to be the thing that God uses to bring your breakthrough. The work of your hands. Somebody say my hands. The seed you've sown. Come on. The prayers you prayed. They're going to all come back to you. <laughs> Scripture says it this way. Press down. Shaken together. Running over. Oh, come on. <laughs> God's going to multiply it. What you're doing right now, be faithful. Are y'all listening to me? Be consistent and watch God work something out in your life. Come on, somebody say, I'm fueling my breakthrough. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> this breakthrough that God is about to bring in your life is going to be so great. <laughs> it's going to be so liberating that you're going to see God <laughs> move like he did in Jacobet life while he's working in the hidden places. <laughs> While he's working in places that you can't see him, you might feel like God might have you hiding in a basket, drifting on the waters of uncertainty. But can I tell you, he sees you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what he put inside of you. And God's going to use you. Come on, somebody say God's going to use me. I want to invite you to stand with me as I pray with you. I want to release this Jacobet anointing. I want us to be intentional about fueling our future, fueling our destiny, fueling our breakthrough, because God is doing something great. Here's what I want to remind you. Release it back to him. Remain consistent and watch as he brings forth the breakthrough from the very thing that you've been working on. Keep the faith. Your breakthrough is on the way. Somebody say that with me. Say, my breakthrough is on the way. Hallelujah.